everyone and welcome to a new episode of the New Link Podcast. This is my podcast about knitting, crocheting and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen and you can find me here on Instagram and on my website. Um, <laughs> I have to say I'm feeling super tired today even though I slept a lot and uh, yeah so I will not be my bubbly self today. Um, I think it's because and this is not to brag although I get it might come across like that. So I went to donate blood for the first time yesterday and uh, my blood pressure has always been on the low side and I just think I'm tired because of that. That could be a reason. So yeah, I'm just uh, gonna take a little bit slow today, not be the hyper self that I was the last episode. Um, and I'm here in my studio and Momo is on the chair behind me and I'll put in some clips in the intro or at the end of Momo. Um, so, uh, last week, so I podcast every two weeks and last week I started a new sock along. So the shoe matching sock along started on September 1st. And it's kind of like a challenge if you never really wear your hand knit socks in your shoes or if you only wear them with boots then maybe you can wear them with sneakers now or maybe you already wear them in sneakers and you can try wearing them in your heels or you know whatever kind of shoes you have or perhaps you think that the hand knit socks you made um, are too colorful so you want to make a um, pair of socks that kind of color matches your shoe so you don't feel like people will look at it. Um, you know saying that colorful socks are getting more and more mainstream with happy socks and you know all kinds of other brands so you don't really need to feel weird wearing colorful socks. But anyway, so that started uh, last last week and uh, I am going to knit a pair of socks to go with a pair of heels that I have because the heels kind of have a sharp edge and it hurts when I wear them so I want to um, make a cute pair of lacy socks or maybe with an embroidered detail so that um, I can wear those with the heels and uh, if you want to join in this sock along so you can tag your photos on instagram with hashtag s m s a l so shoe matching sock along um and you can also join my facebook group which is new leaf designs knitting and crochet crew and also on september 1st i launched my tornado socks pattern or tornado tornado toes and I put them on sock blockers um, so I can show you that it doesn't have a heel but it stretches enough um, to fit comfortably over your heel and this is great for kids who are growing. <laughs> All kids grow, I know, but um, uh, so you don't have to knit them a new pair of socks every year. Not that you should do that, but these will fit them for years and years and years. I mean, I knit the kid size, so it should be like a mid-calf sock on them, and it's an ankle length sock on me. So um, yeah, they could even wear them until they're adults, <laughs> theoretically. And also, in general, these socks will be great for everyone who struggles getting their socks on because you don't need to worry about where the heel is because there is no heel. And uh, last time I mentioned the... Uh, I think I mentioned it. Yes, I think I did. Last time I mentioned that there's a whirlwind toe or a whirlpool toe so that the toe is also spiral so that you really do not have to worry about how how you put it on because how I've done it the toe still has a right side up and you know like a front and a sole and then I, I, I guess it could still be comfortable if you wear them like you know twisted but um, 
if that sort of thing bothers you that it's not exactly the right way on then I would uh, highly suggest looking into the Whirlpool Toe or the Whirlwind Toe. I've included some uh, links to free patterns um, in the Tornado Socks pattern. Tornado Toes, I keep saying Tornado Socks. So Tornado Toes, you can find the pattern in my Ravelry store and also in my New Leaf web shop which is just newleafdesigns.nl slash shop. And if I remember I will put the links down below. So that was a new pattern debuting last week uh, and the new sock along. So I still have to cast on my, my own socks. I'm thinking of using a lace pattern from my Cozy Moment shawl and uh, using that for the entire sock. So that will be um, interesting. Um, yes, so now on to the things that I have been making. I have a completed pair of socks and you'll be pleased to know that it is, in fact, my wild strawberry socks. And these have been on the needles for years, um, simply because, you know, I started them, I thought, okay, I'll do a cuff down sock and, um, yeah, while doing the first sock, I realized that I just really don't like doing cuff down socks. And cuff down socks with um, a German short row heel is fine, but I decided to um, do a heel flap and gusset, and I just really don't like that. So that's why these took me so long. So this is actually my own pattern but I modified it. So the Wild Strawberries pattern is actually written as a toe-up sock with shirt or heel. Um, so I modified it to be cuff down with a heel flap and gusset. And it's pretty easy to do. Um, you just, you look at the stitch count that I recommend for the total width of your foot. So for me that was 60 stitches. Uh, so instead of casting on for the toe, I cast on those 60 stitches here at the cuff. Uh, did a little bit of ribbing just as the pattern says and then um, start the texture pattern also as the pattern says. And then um, at the heel, I did the heel flap over half of the stitches um, and then basically I kind of winged it so uh, if you are more proficient with heel flaps then I'm assuming that you might also know how to do this so a heel flap and then a little bit of short rows and then uh, picking up stitches at the side of the heel flap and decreasing those um, every every two rounds and then you just also continue in the texture pattern and you only do that on this half of the sock and this half is plain and then you decrease for the toe so um yeah it's just not my preferred way of sock knitting but uh i do really like how they fit um and since starting these socks because these socks have really been on the needles, I think, two or three years. Um, since I started these, I've also uh, written a pattern for a toe-up heel flap and gusset. Um, and yeah, those fit me really, really nice, and I can memorize it better, and it's just way easier. So uh, there's a tutorial for that on my Patreon page, and there's also... Um, a downloadable pattern on my Patreon page um, and this is more or less the same heel that is included in my Subtle Sock collection which is an ebook with four sock patterns and the difference is that that is a color work sock collection so that it's it's the same heel but in color work um, and I'm not sure if I also use it for another pair of socks, but I'm really a big fan of that, so I will write that into more of my sock patterns. So yeah, but the Wild Strawberry Sock, so this lovely texture pattern, uh, it's, it is originally also a color work pattern. I will put a uh, picture up here. So um, yeah, you can see they are totally different. Um, so I did them in just one color, which um, yeah, 
just highlights the texture pattern but if you do them in color work like it says in a pattern then you will have a even prettier pair of socks um, yeah so I thought it would be fun to showcase that and I'm really really happy that I finally finished these socks so that I can um, cross another work in progress off my list um, yeah I think I started the year with about 20 whips so um, I don't know how many I have now, but uh, it feels good to um, complete some old works works in progress. Oh. No. Nope. Okay. <laughs> no one really likes my blocking mats. Another thing that I did. Um, earlier this week, or was it last week? <laughs> I lose track of the days, uh, was doing some sweater surgery. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this. Um, so this sweater was originally like this long. Um, it was about this much longer. Um, and the the ribbon kept flipping up and uh, it was just too long, it was driving you crazy and even though <laughs> I had worn it already for a year, I decided that uh, it just wasn't the sweater that I hoped it to be. So um, I chopped it off and I knit some new ribbing and I made sure to do some decreases before starting the ribbing and also knitting a longer ribbing because that helps with um, hem flipping. So the hem was doing this. And yeah, it was just not, not really nice. And uh, yeah, so I, um, I inserted a needle and then I unraveled one row and detached the other piece. And um, I, I have saved the thing, the, <laughs> The part that I chopped off and I'm planning to just knit that into a cowl um, so we'll see if that turns out the way I like it and not that it kind of keeps turning and curling and flipping over itself so uh, yeah but I am really really pleased how the sweater turned out so uh, it fits me much better. It is a cropped version now. The The hem is not flipping anymore and it's just hugging my waist and it looks really, really good on me. And I'm just really, really happy. And I think I still have... I'm not sure if I still have the clip, but if I do, if I haven't deleted it yet, I will put it in right here uh, so you can see how it fits. And the entire video of how I did this is up on my Patreon page for Elder Cheer patrons. So if you have a sweater as well that would need a bit of shortening or perhaps you have another project that this would be helpful for, for example, socks or a scarf, um, then I would recommend that video. Um, and I'm also recording a video on how I picked up the stitches on the bit that I chopped off. Um, yeah, so that will be coming to my Patreon page very soon. So yes, that was just a really satisfying project. It was really easy to do. Um, <laughs> knitting the ribbing was the hardest part. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not my favorite knitting ribbing, but um, it's fine. So uh, yeah, I'm happy that I will get to wear this sweater more often, especially now that it is cooling off except for today because it's really hot today <laughs> really weird um yeah summer making its final comeback and then one last thing i've been doing because uh last time i showed you the embroidery kind of diary kit that i got um which includes several fabrics and embroidery threads and you can just kind of make your own embroidery book um which is really really cool and i was looking for inspiration 
you know, for what to do because there aren't any instructions. Um, and I believe that the instructions might still be coming. So I will be, um, interested to see those. So while I wait for that and also to do, to get some more inspiration, I picked up a embroidery work in progress that has been, you know, that I started 10 years ago when I was living in China. Um, I will show you the, um, I will show you what I have first. So this is what I am making. So it's a boy and a girl and they're holding a floral ribbon and it's actually it's a symbol for marriage for a happy marriage um and <laughs> i don't actually know why i picked this i think because it was the largest one they had or because they thought it was really cute but um the more i am working on this the more i'm thinking like what i would use it for i don't want to have this framed uh maybe i would make it into a pillow that could be really cute or yeah i've seen a diy where people take um an old cupboard i guess so uh, a small cupboard with um with it with a small wooden door and then in the door there's this kind of rectangle that's kind of sunken into the wood do you know what i mean so if you have a door you have uh, the frame and then the center rectangle is kind of lower or there is like a dent around it and they took that out and put some embroidery or some cross stitch in there and i think it looked really really cute um I don't know if I will be able to do that, but um, it was kind of like upholstery for a chair, but then for a cupboard. It's really, really cute. Um, yeah, but I've been working on it again after 10 years. <laughs> and yeah, it's been really nice to work on actually. Let me show you the pattern. I am keeping it in this just see-through plastic envelope. Um, and so this is what it will look like. So they have flowers on the floor here and yeah, it's just really cute. And I'm not sure, um, I think if I use it for a pillow or something that I might want to fill up the white background but I'm not sure <laughs> if I want to torture myself like that and do all of that um, and this is all of the thread that I have it's a lot it's a lot that I still need to need to do and I have an, another um, um, bit of red there yeah so um i did most of the girl when i was still in china and it's it's a lot of red but um yeah also i just really really liked doing this and yesterday I was filling up the boy's face and trying to get some more of the, you know, trying to get as much as possible done, uh, like picking a color that has the most possible squares so um, I can get a sense of progress really fast. and. Um, one thing that I forgot that I did was that on the pattern I noted which days I worked on this. So I worked on this um, when the first date on here is 16 December 2011. I think that might be when I bought it. Although I might have bought it a little bit earlier than that. But I was in China at that time and then 
on and off during 2012. Um, and then there is a couple days in 2018 and then now 2021. <laughs> yeah, so this, this whip is 10 years old. And um, yeah. But, and I still remember going to the market. So uh, there was this market and it wasn't quite far from the university. Um, and they would have all kinds of stuff there. Uh, you could buy meat and fish and herbs and spices and clothes. They would have one row filled with pajamas um, and, uh, you know, pets, um, especially uh, fish, uh, fish and turtles. Um, yeah, and then there was this section where there was a knitting shop and I also bought some needles there and a crochet hook actually and it was one of my favorite crochet hooks because it had a nice wooden handle it was really smooth and then a metal uh, hook and the embroidery um, shopping stall uh, it was quite large actually and they all had um, ceilings? What do you say that? Uh, they all had, uh, you know, um, they had proper stalls, um, and things were also hanging off the ceiling and off the walls, and, um, um, you know, you would buy this, this big set, and then they would, um, actually, like, draw out the pattern for you, so the, the, the squares from the pattern. They would um, draw that on the fabric for me and um, yeah <laughs> so uh, this was one of my first uh, embroidery well like the first uh, in the first 10 embroidery things that I bought because I also bought a lot of small stuff like keychains um, and I've always been used to having the numbers on there and the squares and I didn't really realize how spoiled I was until you know I get an embroidery kit from France and there's nothing <laughs> nothing of the sort <laughs> and I'm like what am I supposed to do um, yeah. yeah but uh, I just I just think it's really cute and um, it's nice to do keeps my mind off of things and um, I have a embroidery hoop from Clover and that is really um, easy to, you know, fasten around your work. I actually got this for Punch Needle because um, it's able to really clamp your stuff and not let it slide. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping that I will get some inspiration for my embroidery book. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we will see. And another thing, wait, let me, let me just put this out of the way first. But another thing that I have been working on, and I will be showing a, um, well, not a sneak peek, I will be blogging about it next week, um, is something with furry tails. So this is Scapius Furry Tails. And this is the Tinkerbell colorway. This is 983. And I've worked uh, a bunch with Scapey's Furry Tails. I've used it for uh, a polar bear plushie, which um, was featured in Yarn Book is in issue 10. Um, I've made a Yeti plushie for Inside Crochet, and I will be publishing that pattern um, very soon actually, um, as a separate PDF. I have uh, designed the Friendly Fox plushie. So three plushies so far. This will not be a plushie. Um, yes, but it will still be animal themed. So um, I will be posting about it next week. Um, and then I will have a new pattern out in the next 
few weeks. So stay tuned for that. That is going to be a really, really fun project. Yeah, I'm just really excited to tell you more about that. Um, and that was most of the things that I have been up to. Of course, I still have some secret stuff, but um, yeah. Uh, and then another thing. So I have been watching Downton Abbey for the first time. Um, it's on Netflix now. And luckily also on the Dutch version of Netflix. Uh, so I thought, okay, let's see what this fuss is all about. So I just uh, started watching it. I'm in season three now. Um, and it's a nice show to watch while knitting. And sometimes the characters will be cross-stitching and that, that will be fun. But uh, they don't really show it up close. So yeah, I don't really watch it for that. It's just nice to have on in the background. And um, it's a nice and relaxing show. Um, and I can't say yet if I like it. I just, I think, you know, it's okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm in season three now, so please don't tell me any spoilers. Um, I don't actually know how many seasons there are, but um, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying it. Uh, one thing that I will say, and I do have to give a spoiler warning um, for like seasons one and two, I think. Yeah, and also, and also season three, yes, uh, there are some spoilers. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, just, you know, I, I don't think I'll be talking about anything else this episode. So, you know, I can just see you next time. Uh, but I do think that Downton Abbey has a real problem with ableism. Um, I mean, have you noticed that every character who is uh, disabled or has like some kind of injury is then either cured or ridiculed or, you know, whatever. Um, and I'm going to talk about specific characters now. So really, if you don't want any spoilers, then I've warned you. So uh, the first episode already starts with um, uh, this character, Mr. Bates, and he has um, some injury in his leg from when he went to war. And uh, then he gets some kind of leg brace to help him um not have the limp anymore but it's like it, it it's hurting him really bad um and they um and they convince him not to wear the brace anymore but then suddenly he doesn't have a limp anymore like he just has his cane and he's able to carry all of the things with two hands instead of one hand leaning on his cane so it's kind of forgotten after that and then um uh and then thomas uh who uh gets shot in the hand um and that is kind of mentioned for a couple episodes and he wears a glove and then but then he's able to do all things again and now he doesn't even wear a glove anymore and i haven't really noticed if he still has a scar but like it's it's not mentioned ever and and then of course uh mr matthew um who uh was paralyzed from the waist down but then miraculously he got up from his wheelchair and um it was just like um i was like oh this could be exciting uh, a main character in a wheelchair and then yeah, but he was he was being babied all the time, like, oh, don't do that, I'll do that for you, and you just rest, and then, you know, it's a miracle when, and of, co of course that is nice, but, like, why? <laughs> why does that need to happen with each and every character? And then not to mention that Mr. Um, Anthony... Uh, that uh, Edith, Edith is um, is going to marry, and then um, he has his arm in a sling, and he's he ke he kept saying, "Oh, this wretched arm, and uh, I'm an invalid." And uh, her family keeps worrying about Edith having to be a nurse all her life, and and then he leaves her at the altar, 
uh, because he feels he would be a burden for her. And it's just all of these, uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Downton, fix your ableism, oh my god. Um, yeah, so that is kind of like uh, painful to watch. Um, yeah. Oh, and also uh, Mrs. Patmore, who uh, I think was at the end of the first season or some somewhere around that time, where she was going blind and then she goes to London and then, oh, she isn't blind anymore, yay! <laughs> it's like, why introduce all of these all of these things if you're going to wipe them away after one episode. Uh, it's like, why? <sighs> yeah, <laughs> I would much rather see characters um, learning to adjust their lives and, and the show actually showing people living happily with a disability. So, um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, it's not the only problem that the show has, and I will say that my respect for the actress Maggie Smith has gone down, because, you know, I've loved her work, but she says such stupid things, and I feel like, okay, it's just, it's just a character she's playing, but... Yeah, I just, uh, when, when someone plays a character like that so convincingly, I'm like, hmm, yeah, there must be some truth to that. But yeah, other than that, <laughs> it's just nice to have on in the background, and, um, yeah, I'm not sure if you would say that it is fluffy TV, so just kind of soothing, because some... There are things that are not soothing, and I do quite like the historical references about the um, the Romanov family and the World War One starting, and you know, and and the first season with the Titanic. I do quite like those uh, historical references, so that makes it quite fun. Um, yeah, but um, if you haven't watched it yet, um, perhaps you would like it too. Um, yeah, but it's just nice to um, <laughs> to watch while you're knitting. And if if you want a more action-filled um, thing to watch, then I highly recommend the Tomb Raider movie. Uh, I watched it when when it was in um, um, in a cinema. Uh, I was like, what's the word? <laughs> uh, cinema is like really different from the Dutch word we have for it. Um, but it's really nice. I really love the uh, Tomb Raider uh, character with uh, Alicia Vikander. I think she plays it really, really good. And uh, I've always been a big fan of Tomb Raider. I've played all of the games. Um, yeah, big fan. So uh, if you're into that, it's on Netflix now as well. So yeah, that was my Netflix update for you. Um, and I think that was all that I wanted to say for this episode. It has been on the short side, I think, but... Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, I will be back in two weeks with hopefully some more embroidery progress and probably a new cast on because I finished quite a few things now. So you know that that's coming. Right, I hope you have a lovely two weeks and do check out my website next week for when I post about this project. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you in the next one. Bye!